Okay, you don't need to start doing that. She always starts doing that. Oh. But be, wait, what did I just say? I don't know. <laughs> if I, well, you guys keep talking so much. No, I'm I don't. Every, yeah, you do. I literally barely spoke. What? I didn't even consider other like other universities. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> My foot is asleep. Well. So hey guys, today we're just going to talk about our three different career paths. We're all sisters. Um, we're five years apart. We're three years apart. We all went to the University of Toronto. We went to the same university and we applied from high school in the exact same program. And from there, we kind of branched off into all our different career paths. Yeah, so we're just going to discuss kind of how we all got onto the career path that we're on or on the educational path that we're on. So let's kind of start with applying to university and why we chose the program that we did when we went into university. Labia, do you want to start? I applied for cell and molecular biology. I guess I, I was always interested in going into science in, in general, but biology, given the application to medicine and the healthcare field, was always one of the, the avenues that I wanted to go down. But that's sort of why I chose biology. And a beer? I did. Oh, yeah. What did you study? <laughs> I, I did a specialist in neuroscience. I don't know. I just thought, I'm like, oh my gosh, brain stuff, so cool. Neuroscience, action potentials, all that stuff. Yeah, so for me, I kind of did the same thing. I didn't really put much thought into it. I just applied for a general, like, life sciences. Um, and from there, obviously, I narrowed into what I wanted to study, but I did continue to study life sciences as one of my majors. Now let's kind of go into how we narrowed our field from life sciences to what we kind of did throughout our four years of university. I, so as I said, I did my specialist in cell and molecular biology. In the, during the first two years, it was very basic sort of general biology, so ecology and all that stuff as well. But then really during my third and fourth year, I was more interested in molecular biology and more sort of the mechanistic, um, fundamentals of how a cell works and therefore things that go wrong how that causes disease but at a molecular level and I think the, the defining moment for me was like a supervised summer research project in immunology and that was the first time I was in the lab but actually doing real experiments and reading papers and forming um, hypotheses and sort of actually doing science I knew I wanted to continue on in uh, basic research I got it like my program was specialist in neuroscience and I chose the co-op version and I chose neuroscience mostly because like I was always interested in um, just the brain and the nervous system in general. From neuroscience you get like a good understanding of like the basic science part combined with more like clinical stuff as well. Um, yeah, so for me, I did a double major in human biology and political science. So I did stick with a general life sciences background, but I complemented that with a political science program because I was interested in more social sciences and kind of politics and law. Taking political science also facilitated my path towards wanting to go to law school. Human biology, I kind of just stuck to it just because I did like grade 11 and 12 sciences and because I did apply for that in first year. And I guess for a degree, I did want to have like an honors bachelor of science as compared to a bachelor of arts. It wasn't necessarily tailored towards the career that I wanted in the future, but I think it was it was still a good idea to kind of to keep like my horizons broadened. So I think for me, it was good to have that diverse array from going from life sciences to social sciences I think also it's great because it does keep your career path open towards like whatever you want to do in the future. So if you're split between like complete opposites like med school or law school or even just going into research or going into more political science research as compared to life sciences research, it does keep like all your career options open instead of closing the doors before you've even decided what you want to do. So now let's talk about like our university experience in general. We all graduated. I'm graduating this year, um, or I have graduated. I'm. How do I explain the situation? <laughs> COVID nineteen. That's all you have to say. Yeah, I and mean, basically <laughs> we're now we're all graduated. We're not going back to University of Toronto. So let's go into overall our university experience. How we the parts of it that we liked, the parts of it that we didn't like, stuff that we would have changed if we had the chance to change. So Lavia, you can start. So going into university, I think I had this idea that I would go into med school. Um, I still took whatever I really I wanted to take. I took English courses, I took philosophy, I took math and physics and whatever that I wanted to take. So I didn't let it impact that, mostly because I wasn't 100% sure that I would go down that path anyways. And so I also wanted to keep my options as open. In terms of what I would change, is take more sort of computer science and things that 
um, programming because those are skills that I didn't realize that biology I would even need but actually you do and it would be a great asset even right now so now I'm trying to learn this stuff I really enjoyed my program and like I got a great mix of like lab stuff and just it was just a good mix of both like biology and psychology but like because my end goal is medicine um I would probably not do a specialist that would leave me room to take courses that probably would have lowered my like course load burden or I could have like just taken other courses that I was interested in for example like I, I took courses like in music and um also like English and stuff and I really enjoyed those I wish I could have done more of that um yeah so I did a double major in human biology and political science I would say I didn't like my human biology program obviously it was the more difficult program to do but I think I wouldn't have changed that because I think again like I did get a lot of skills that I wouldn't have necessarily had if I just stuck with a humanities background I did enjoy my political science background However, like at times it did feel a little bit elementary. I found myself more challenged by the life sciences background and I do like being challenged. Whereas the political science courses for me were kind of like my bird courses. I did consider them like my easier courses. Overall, I did enjoy doing a double major in human biology and political science. And because I did take more life sciences courses, I graduated with an honors bachelor of science. Well, now let's kind of go into where we are now in our lives. So Lab, you graduated how many years ago? 2016. Four years? <laughs> four four years? years ago. Yeah, so she graduated four years ago. You graduated oh my God. June 2018. Two years ago. June 2018. Hey, okay, let's make it a so year and a half. Anyway, she graduated. <laughs> April, oh my she God. graduated in two no. years ago. Um, I never will because of coronavirus. But I graduated. I would have graduated June of 2020. So where are you now, Labia? What are you doing? What is your life? After I graduated, I did a master's in immunology thing. And you were um, still at the University of Toronto for that? I was still at the University of Toronto for that. So that was two years. It was definitely difficult, but it was really rewarding in that I decided to then continue and I wanted to do a PhD. I applied for a PhD in London um, at the Francis Crick Institute. London, England. Okay. <laughs> Whenever I say London, people are like Ontario. So I'm at the Francis Crick Institute. Um, which is in the heart of London, um, but affiliated with the University Co University College London. So that's what I'm doing right now. So I guess I'm already in my second year. So you'll PhD. be done in two years. You have two more years. Yeah. So I have two more years. Okay, Abir, where are you right now? What are you doing? Um, I did my co-op um, internship, which was eight months long, at uh, as a clinical research assistant in the orthopedics department at Sunnybrook Hospital. Once I graduated. I took the time after my graduation, like two months to study and write my MCAT. My supervisor from my co-op placement, she emailed me asking if I would want to like start working full time um, with them. And because I wasn't really doing anything else at that time, I agreed. So I'm continuing right now to work um, as a clinical research assistant. It was just cool that you got that sort of real life experience in terms of what it's like to talk to patients and the, the difficult part of it not like just the school part of it the there's just a lot that i got to do which is great um, which which also um, um, exemplifies how it's good to take a year of working between sort of school and then school again really um network with the people that you are working with because um you never know where like your opportunities can come from i think that goes for every career obviously networking is a huge thing like not even in terms of career but in terms of especially when you're in that threshold like about to graduate and you don't really know what you might want to do after having these relationships with whether it be with your professors or your supervisors that makes a huge difference in securing a job or even finding more clarity in your own career path also don't like be afraid to ask because that's your job any supervise any person that's like sort of like a, pro a professor or a supervisor they want to help and never feel like um you're sort of putting yourself out or that you're annoying them or anything like that like in terms of what i'm doing right now i current so obviously i'm graduating this year i'll be going to osgood hall law school in september 2020 just in a few months hopefully we'll see what happens with the coronavirus situation but yeah so i'll be starting law school and law school for those of you who don't know it's three years long i am leaning towards international law but obviously i don't know that i haven't even started law school and again for me i was in university only for three years because i graduated a year early because of that i feel like i didn't really get the work exposure that i would have liked or i guess the skills that would have 
kind of benefited me to pick up before starting law school. It is going to be kind of a natural transition for me because I'm coming straight out of undergraduate. So yeah, we'll but see. then you can take those now for you. The important part is then making those connections and just asking for opportunities to help even with the little time that you will have. I feel like we're all on very different paths despite coming from really similar university experiences. So I think that just shows like university is really a unique experience for everyone and like it's easy to kind of forge your own path and branch off into whatever interests you. You can still pursue things that you want to pursue. Like even if you want to do medicine or law or all these sort of things aren't strictly dependent on what program you did. So you can still, there's still some malleability in terms of what you're interested in. Obviously, even if you're not going into medical school or law school, there's so many other career options that are always open to you, regardless of the program that you took. And obviously, even supervisors or these graduate schools, they are always looking for diversity in the range of programs that you've taken and kind of what kind of experience you've had in terms of your courses. So that's why it is always important to keep like a diverse array of courses. And so in the end, the only thing that will help you really is to do what interest you so now in terms of what we want to do in the future so for some of us that's like really far off like for example for me a, a set career is like many years off but i think a um, set career for me is also many years off well you're like older so <laughs> it should be closer it's not closer. okay you're in your second year of your phd you mm -hmm. have two more years in your phd what are you planning to do after you get your phd so i have a couple of different career options in mind one i can just go down the academic route and do a postdoc um, and then go and start my own lab and have my own research. So other main sort of um, career path that I have in my mind right now is still being a scientist, but maybe not in a university or an institute, but maybe working for a company. So for a pharmaceutical company, um, working on a research goal, that's not my independent research goal. So it's not like I can just come up with whatever I want to do and then pursue it. It'll be more sort of aligned to the goals of the company. For example, if it's a pharmaceutical company, it'll be how to develop this vaccine and then you're a scientist working on that problem. I know I want to be a scientist wherever that is. So there's a lot of new fields and new avenues that you can, that people before you have nev not even considered. So it's just about trying to think about the next wave front of what does the world need in 10 years. So I'm here right now. In 10 years, what is going to be the most important problem that the world is going to face and if you really want to then think like that then you then you'll always have that in your forefront and be like okay i need to work on this problem now because that's going to be a problem that will need a solution in the future and that's how i guess the, in, in terms of doing science that's the best way to think about it like that's going to be a problem i need to work on it starting now well yeah but not even science like whether it's the medical field the research field like the legal field well, obviously yeah, yeah. everything is transforming at like a unprecedented rate like everything's changing so rapidly and obviously the needs of all of these different fields as the needs of society shift they're also all going to shift in terms of the needs of the field and what they're going to require of their workers and people who are working in those careers so obviously we're all, we're all looking at that change just from different lenses and perspectives okay abir what is your future plans um so currently you're working at um, Sunnybrook as a clinical research assistant. What is like the next few years looking for you and then kind of even further on where do you want to see yourself? I will be reapplying for medical school. In the meantime, well I also applied to do a one-year global health master's. I chose it because it's one year and it also like it gives me a good understanding of public health which is really applicable public health on like in an international scale, I guess, which is really good. And it ties in with me wanting to still continue to pursue medicine. Other than that, I'm still, I'm continuing to work as a clinical research assistant. But I think in terms of public health, that is a huge field. And like, obviously in terms of whether- Especially right now. Yeah. And like a lot of people are pursuing like a global health masters or public health masters. And I think it is a really important asset to have, to, like regardless of the field that you're in or regardless of your career path. Okay, so that kind of concludes our video. It was kind of scattered and all over the place, but um. <laughs> but yeah, I hope this like helped give some insight into three different career paths coming from a the same family, b the same university, c the same program in the university, and just seeing how we all shaped our own career paths. Um, and going forward, just what we want to pursue and just how our life pans out. 
So yeah, good luck on your career path. We might make another one in like 10 years and see <laughs> if we're still doing something. Okay, that's it. Bye. Bye.